How to save for retirement at 45. One of the most common mistakes made in the retirement investing world particularly among 401 participants is over-concentration in an employer's stock. In an analysis of more than 100-000-401, participants from companies offering stock in their 401 plan more than 54% of employees had stock concentration levels that were greater than 20% of their total account and amount that is enough to significantly decrease their median forecasts. In fact loading up on your employer stock is even worse than loading up on a random individual security. Why? Because chances are your job is likely to be highly correlated with how the company's stock performs. If bad things happen to the industry or the stock of your employer you are likely not only to lose your money on the investment but possibly your job as well. As the unhappy former employees of Enron can attest this double whammy effect can be devastating particularly if you were nearing retirement. This implies that you should be even less likely to want to hold the stock of your employer than you would be to hold the stock of a random company. Unfortunately surveys suggest that many employees do exactly the opposite loading up on their employer stock in their retirement plan. People often confuse a good company with a good stock. Your company may be the most amazing creative world dominating run by geniuses firm around but it does not mean that the stock is undervalued. Chances are all that good stuff about the company is already factored into its price by the market. To determine that something is undervalued you have to have information about the future prospects of the firm that are not understood by the market. If it is public you can bet that the markets have already digested the information. If the new information is private you were prohibited by law from trading on it. Never make the mistake of assuming that a great company implies a great stock. Sometimes the impact of stock volatility can be counterintuitive. Consider an investor at the beginning of January in 1997. Let's say this investor consulted a magical genie and was offered a stock pick that would return an average of 37% per year for the next 6 years guaranteed. The genie states that there would be many bumps along the road but the investment was guaranteed to have average annual returns of 37%. The investor does a quick calculation in his head and determines that if he invests $100,000 in the stock and gets an average annual return of 37% then he stands to make about $560,000 over the next 6 years. Not a bad deal right? Sure there will be some volatility but those guaranteed average annual returns look pretty good. The investor thanks the genie and promptly goes off to invest his $100,000 in the recommended stock. Fast forward 6 years later to December 31st, 2002. As promised by the genie the stock pick has achieved annual returns of 37% over the 6 year period. But the investor is astonished to see that his account balance is only $80.130. He actually lost 20% of his money. What the heck happened? The stock in this example actually did have average annual returns of 37% over the period January 1, 1997 through December 31, 2002. But the growth rate was an anemic 3.6% per year. The average return was pretty good but the volatility of the stock's performance killed the growth rate. The stock had extraordinary performance in the period leading up to early 2000 but this was matched by equally poor performance in 2001 and 2002. The result was that average returns were strongly positive for the 6 year period but the overall cumulative performance was poor. This is an extreme example but clearly demonstrates the danger of focusing too much attention on average returns without considering the impact of volatility. Remember that volatility matters a lot in accumulating wealth over time. The above is an excerpt from the book The Intelligent Portfolio by Christopher L. Jones published by John Wiley & Sons Incorporated. May 2008 $27.95 30 US dollars and 99 cents can 978 0 470 20 2804 3 copyright copyright 2008 Christopher L. Jones. Christopher L. Jones is Chief Investment Officer and Executive Vice President of Investment Management for Financial Engines. Working closely with founder William F. Sharp Jones built and led the team of experts in finance economics and mathematics that developed the financial methodology for financial engines personalized investment advice and management services. Jones has led the investment management function at financial engines for more than a decade. He holds in Mies in Business Technology and Mies in Engineering Economic Systems and a BA in Quantitative Economics all from Stanford University.